So people keep asking questions about who, who's who, who got hired first, and how they got hired here, who's related, who's not. So I figured I would start with the first person ever got hired here. Well, I guess you were the first person ever. The first person who still works here. <laughs> the first person ever worked at Hercules. The first one ever, over 100 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> you had to sign your checks with a stone tablet. Yeah, so... <laughs> Well, my my dad was uh, and my fa and my uh, my dad's brothers, my uncles, did the business. So then, when I was a little kid, I went in with my dad, and then uh, started uh, stamping bags mm -hmm. when I was a little kid and labels. Mm -hmm. And we had an ink pad, and we had a big stamp, <laughs> and then we used to stamp like white bags. The white bags would put your candy in and then labels mm -hmm. too. We used to stamp our own labels and mm -hmm. cut them and uh, make them and, and then uh, that did was my get, first job. Did you get paid for that? Uh, I got like 50 cents or something. Yeah. I don't know how it's only like uh, I don't know, between 8 and 11 years old yeah. or so. I mean when you're 8 to 11 years old in 1960, that could, 50 cents could get you pretty far. Yeah, that was a lot of money <laughs> then. Yeah. What are you going to do with all that? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So that's how I started. Yeah. yeah. And then growing up, you uh, your dad would trick you into making candy sometimes? Well, yeah. He, during the holidays, I, I, I knew he needed me because I learned how to make candy. So then I was the only one around. Mm -hmm. So like making brittle on Saturdays, he would say, we'll just make a couple batches and then I'd, you can go skiing or whatever it was I was doing mm -hmm. and then the next one would be like well can you make one more <laughs> all right I'd stay and then he'd go oh can you just do one more <laughs> and then pretty soon I made brittle all day mm -hmm. yeah. but he needed it so I stayed yeah and then uh, it was passed around from brother to brother for a while until eventually it closed down yeah, yeah, but the brothers passed it around because they didn't really want it because uh, they all had pretty good jobs back in the old days, back railroad, General Electric, uh, <coughs> let's see, post office. Uh, they all had pretty decent jobs back then, mm -hmm. and uh, they didn't really want to do the candy. They only kept it alive for uh, their mother, my grandmother, because mm -hmm. she uh, n told them she didn't want to see it go uh you know, disappear. Yeah. And so then my dad was the last one to have it, so then that's how I learned everything because he had it and I worked after school uh, as a kid and then uh, that's how I learned to make all the candy basically really mm -hmm. back then. Was, uh, yeah. And you were just doing it for a while by yourself until you met mom? Yeah, yeah <laughs> I was doing it by myself and I'd hire some friends here and there to make help me make brittle and stuff, uh, and a little bit of chocolate. Uh, but yeah, it was really small. And I used to go to farmers market on Saturdays too. Mm -hmm. I did uh, go down there. I'd get up at like four in the morning to make like a brittle, one batch of brittle at home mm -hmm. by myself. Put yeah. the handle down on the marble table, scrape it out, huh. make the batch by myself. How did you pour it by yourself? I just set the handle down, you know, the other handle from the brittle oh, yeah. on the ke on the keg, or mm -hmm. I mean, not on the keg, on the c on the cuddle. Yeah. And then just scraped it hmm. onto the table, and you just do what you have to do when you're yeah. alone. <laughs> Find a way. And uh, I'd take that down to the market and sell it all right away. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were very s skeptical because I was just a young guy, and uh, they said, "You made this candy? I made clusters. I had cloth, mm -hmm. I had brittle. I had all that stuff in there." Like kind of doubting me. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, I just made this stuff this morning. And they'd look at me and go, what? Because <laughs> nobody did stuff like that. Yeah, especially like you said, a, a youngin. Yeah, it was only in my early 20s. Yeah. Yeah, so. basically, wow, younger than I am right now. Yeah, I was only 21, 22, wow. 23. I'd set up. And then, uh, yeah, then, then eventually uh, met your mom. And then uh, we, uh, she started learning how to make candy with me, and then uh, eventually uh, I got to the point where uh, 
I, I couldn't make the candy and do the book work and eventually your mom started doing the book work and the orders and different things mm -hmm. a little bit at a time to the point then I could make candy all day yeah because I used to do uh, all paperwork in the morning till noon and then would make candy till afternoon so yeah. now once you got involved then I started making candy all day yeah so then I could make more yeah so I think it would also be kind of fun for you to tell your side of the story of how you and mom met and then mom tell her side of the story yeah yeah <laughs> so uh, how did you and mom meet <laughs> well I used to work in a bar in the summertime, a bartender in the, in the village of East Syracuse, and, uh, uh, and then I went to the farmer's market on Saturdays, but I, but I would go there to the bar, and uh, she'd see my car, <laughs> apparently, <laughs> and stop in and sit next to the register and um, talk to me. and. Uh, Eventually, uh, I asked her out, <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> she was stalking me. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll get go get her side of the story then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, what's your side of the story? How did you start getting hired here? I never was actually hired. <laughs> really, I wasn't. Mm. Um, well, I started dating the candy man in the summer. Wait. So, okay. Let's start with that. How did you guys meet? I want to hear your sad story. <laughs> okay. Do you think that's up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, some friends and I stopped at a neighborhood establishment after work when I worked at the Plainville Farms restaurant. It's a turkey restaurant. <laughs> anyway, we stopped there after work. because on my way home. And um, somebody introduced me to a guy named Carl. And Carl's like, oh, you live on Heyman Street? Hey, Steve lives on Heyman Street. The, um bartender mm. the dreamy bartender <laughs> so um that was good information to have <laughs> <laughs> so then i would drive by and i thought well oh, golly he's cute but i didn't think anything of it for but then after i thought he really is cute i should go back there so i went back there when i because i figured out which what car was his because he parked his car in front of his house they said he owned hercules candies and there was a sign out there but it wasn't open there was a sign on the lamp pole because I used to drive by there and see the sign there sometime, and I went, huh, I wonder what that is. Eh, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really have, I never bought candy, so yeah. why would I care about the whatever candy store was there? But I did figure out that that red cutlass was his. And when I'd see it parked in front of Marco's Golden Spike, I'd be like, uh-huh, Terry's stopping in for a little drinky drink. <laughs> so I'd sit in front of the cash register so he couldn't ignore me. And it only took about three times, and then uh, he asked me out. Mm -hmm to a party and after party because apparently he didn't have any money <laughs> <laughs> after parties are cheap so um yeah so we went to this after party and then we got married and you say like he introduced you to people and you're like this is uh, oh yeah i could tell he didn't know who i was my your name. name he couldn't remember my name <laughs> <laughs> but eh, no big deal it's, yeah. he's still re he, being raised by him i'm not surprised yeah i, I just got, i got that in one so um <laughs> As we were going to the after parties, we're going up the stairs. I'm behind. Him, I go. I go. So in case you forgot my name, it's Terry. Because <laughs> I could just tell. Yeah. I could remember my name, but mm -hmm. he was still dreamy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you overlooked that. Sure did. <laughs> so yeah. So then we, you know, started dating, and then um, so that was like August-ish, which is you know the, the falls when the candy season gets busy, and then he's like, well, we're not going to be able to do much anymore because my candy store is starting up, so I'm not going to be pretending to buy her anymore. So I was like, oh, okay, do you want me to help you a little bit? He's like, well, yeah, <laughs> you know. But so if I wanted to see my boyfriend, I had to help him for free in his candy store. <laughs> so that's how I got hired, you know. And then we got married, and then. After a while, I started thinking, I started subscribing to some trade magazines. And I started buying a little bit, because I mean, it was still his business and I was working elsewhere. It wasn't really, I didn't know. you were still waitressing? I was actually managing a restaurant. Okay. And then, um, heck, that restaurant closed and I <laughs> did, but not because of me. It was already closed <laughs> and I just Is took it, it uh, over, Giovanni's? the management. I went to Giovanni's. From, it was from Plainville Turkey Farm. Mm. It was kind of going downhill so I took the manager quit and so I got, I got to manage a, the sinking ship for a couple of months <laughs> before it sank but it was already we already knew it was closing but yeah then I started working at Giovanni's an Italian restaurant and uh which was good because I, I worked less hours so I could help more with the candy and um then I started doing things to make it my own because it wasn't a very frilly place there mm -hmm. wasn't the packaging 
basically the packaging was put it in a package that's airtight, put a price and a white and a green sticker on it, you're good. Mm-hmm. You don't doesn't matter how it looks, just get it in that package. And that's the end of it. <laughs> but somewhere along the way, I think I subscribed to some trade magazines and started getting interested in making gift baskets because this was the 80s and gift baskets were starting to become a thing. So I started ordering a few supplies here and there. And then um, Steve was, you know, he would do the paperwork, like the the writing checks and stuff, but he just found like he didn't have much time for that. And I came from the restaurant management thing and I was used to doing paperwork. So I'm like, well, you know, I'll take that over for you. Then you can worry about making candy. So that kind of started becoming our deal was my job was to do as much stuff as I could. So your dad could just make candy. Mm -hmm. But then somewhere along the way, we were like, hmm, what if something happens to Steve? Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to make candy. So we thought maybe I should learn how to make candy. (laughs) And the other thing was with things like ribbon candy and brittle, he always depended on his cousins mm-hmm. to make to make that with him because they all they kind of did that in their childhood too. But they didn't work for us and they had other jobs, so that wasn't really a dependable source of making brittle and ribbon, which those things were not a big deal back then. Mm-hmm. But he thought, well, I should probably learn how to do this. So um, I learned how to do those things too, which is a good thing because we've certainly make a lot more of those items now. And then that way, it didn't matter. I was I was a captive. Mm. I wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> if you needed to make brittle, there I was. So um, that you know, that's why I learned how to make candy. Mm-hmm. Um, and now here we are. It's well, you started the website a while ago too. You know, I did start a website in 1998. Um, mm-hmm. Actually, for that, I. St- I didn't start out doing that myself because we got a mm-hmm. computer in 1998. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, I remember. Six. Okay. Yeah, I remember I played a game on, I think, oh, AOL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you, you guys, had one, now you can't play for too long because I think it costs like per minute It was dial-up. Yeah, yeah. Yes, we had dial-up. Yes. Um, but yeah, I, I uh, got, I wanted a website and in order to, to know what I wanted, I had to at least get a computer and look mm-hmm. at other websites and see what I wanted. So I had to teach myself to use a computer because I, I, get, I remember the first time. Okay, this is a this is a funky mouse, but mm-hmm. the first time using a mouse, it's like, how do you get the pointer to go where you want it to go? <laughs> it was just such a big learning curve. Mm-hmm. But I got myself one of those yellow um, Windows ninety five for dummies. <laughs> And I was like, I'm going to squeeze my money out of this computer. And I would just go through page by page to learn mm. everything, like copying and pasting and stuff like that, <laughs> what, saving, and just the whole how to use a computer. So I taught myself how to use that with those dummies books. And then um, I got a digital camera and you know started taking some photos. And I hired a 16-year-old boy, to his name was Scott Brady, to do the website because I saw in the newspaper, this would have been right around 98, that... The New York State Fair didn't have a website, and Scott Brady, he was looking online for the website for the fair, and he didn't find one. He's like, well, then I'll just make one. <laughs> so he did. Um, you know, and back then, you, everything was hand-coded with HTML mm. and mm-hmm. cascading style sheets and stuff like that. <laughs> Pearl. <laughs> Whatever those things mean. But anyways, he, he did hand-coding, and he made us a website. And it was basically just for wedding favors. That was the only thing that we really sold because it was – those were more of a big ticket item mm-hmm. at the time and there was no competition in yeah. 1998 we were doing a pretty good web business for for being a small business we were doing yeah. pretty well um as time progressed the wedding favors the wedding market became more diluted because everybody was selling them mm. so that became more diluted but then we started adding all of our other products onto the website and now we have wedding favors on there, but they're not too big of a deal. Yeah. And how many would you say that you used to um, sell online as far as like orders, like per year, just well, what, that, like when it was wedding, when, well, when it was wedding favors, we would probably do 10 or 20 a month mm-hmm. in the wedding month, say June to October, which was pretty good because those are fairly high ticket items. But we, I can't even remember when we started doing the regular stuff. Yeah. Um, probably around 2000-ish, maybe even later. And then if we got 10 orders a week in December, we were like, website's been pretty busy. Yeah. Um, we weren't so much depending on the website for selling to people elsewhere. It was more our local people were using as a catalog. Mm. They would go online, see what they wanted, and then come in with a list of, hey, I saw this on your website. Mm. So it was kind of working locally, whereas yeah. now in the middle of this schmarona thing, um, we're actually not selling as much to our local people mm-hmm. because it's it involves placing an order on the phone. I mean, they can email me too. 
um, placing an order on the phone, giving us the credit card information over the phone, and picking it up in person. And that's probably just a little clunkier. I mean, they certainly can have us order it and ship it to their uh, mm -hmm. home, but yeah. they're not doing that. Yeah. So we're selling more with the Schmarona thing. We're selling more online than we are locally, which is kind of a, a twist. Because yeah. it's been... It's been about half and half since the YouTube mm -hmm. channel became so big. It's been about 50-50. And, and since we've moved here, it's been about 50-50. But now it's about 95-5. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, we're not, we might, like, day after Easter, I don't know if we, I don't think we sold one order coming up to the curb. Mm -hmm. And we could, we could do more with Facebook to push it. Oh, yeah. But we're so busy yeah. <laughs> with the online sales that we're not doing that because we have such a small staff now. Yeah. As of saying, once we closed the store, we let the seasonal people go just a couple of weeks early because they were already going to be done. So it didn't seem worth the risk because they mm -hmm. had full-time jobs yeah. elsewhere. Didn't really seem like worth the risk to bring them in here on a daily basis with the crowd of people they'd been around. So mm -hmm. just to keep everybody safe, that's why we went down to just the seven of us. Mm -hmm. And it's worked because we're all still here. Where was I going with that train of thought? But, oh, anyways, so with our reduced staff, we're not really pushing the, the local thing because... Mm -hmm. We're, it's all we can do to keep up with the online yeah. business. Yeah, because if we didn't have online right now, it probably wouldn't be we able would to be, be open. Yeah, yeah so then, like if we were still at the house and didn't have the YouTube channel. Yes, it would, then it would just be your dad and I doing it. Yeah. Or, yeah, the dad have to be that way. Because, I mean, before the YouTube channel, um, when we were at the house, I always worked a second job just so that we could keep Karen full-time. And she would be the only full-timer. All the other seasonal people would be gone for the season and Karen was all alone mm -hmm. except for when I was there and she t she found it kind of lonely mm -hmm. but kind of not amazing. anymore yeah <laughs> <laughs> nope yeah well maybe I should go see what Karen has to say about all that yes. see if it checks out with your story hopefully I think we got our stories straight yeah okay we talk crap yeah you too thanks so Karen yes. when did you start working here in 1992 yeah in November. Yeah, so I was six months old. You and Kara were six months old. Mm -hmm. And you would just see us in the playpen, you said? I'd walk by and you guys were in the kitchen in a playpen. And every time I'd walk by, I'd look because I hadn't seen twins that much. I'd say, oh my God, there's two of them. <laughs> it was just amazed me. Yeah. Now twins are common. Yeah. Uh, so what were you doing before uh, you started working here? I had worked at a company. Um, making printed circuit boards mm. and I had gotten laid off because they downsized and I took a year off of work and then I decided I think I need to look for a job mm -hmm. and I read it in the penny saver yeah. and it said a mature person for sales and working in a candy store and I thought well I was 42, mm -hmm. and I thought, well, she means old. <laughs> so I went in and applied and got the job. Yeah. And I've been here since. Yeah. So what was it like back then versus now? Yeah. I loved the little house. I yeah. did. <laughs> I did. And, um... We weren't quite as busy as we are now, yeah. <laughs> but it was nice. It yeah. was very homey. Yeah. Yes. So is that what you liked about the old place? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, mom and pops. Yeah. And grandma. <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot of people who um, think that related. people... Are, yeah, yeah. I people am always not ask related. who's related and who's not. Nope. Um, the people that I call mom and dad are related to me. Yes. <laughs> 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 the reason I call mom and dad... Um, but yeah, you just started working here. Um, it was you said like 27 years ago. Yeah, that's yeah, long. that's long. I just remember like uh, coming home from middle school, and I would just come through the candy store, maybe get a sample, and then we'd talk to you about our day, and yeah. then go upstairs. Go upstairs. And, yeah. Fun. It was fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, no. So what what uh what has changed as far as like job wise, like what you have to do day to day between now and back? A lot of shipping. Yeah. A lot of shipping. And just more demand on our products. Yeah. And customers and of course not now, but Yeah. Yeah, so know. how how have things changed like, you know, just a couple months ago versus now and there's really no walk ins or anything? No walk ins. More shipping because mm -hmm. people are staying home and mm -hmm. not really coming out and 
hopefully will open up soon. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. And then people can come back and see our friendly faces. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, for now, they'll just have to settle for YouTube. Yeah, that's yeah. it. All right. Well, I guess I should go see how everyone else got hired. They're around somewhere. Yeah. In this big building. Yeah. Hi, right, Kara. How did you first get hired here? Um, when I was ten, I was just walking down the street, and these people came up to me and said, I'm "Hey, you. you want to make some candy canes, kid?" <laughs> Instead of, "Do you want free candy?" Mm. Turns out they're my parents. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, I've been making candy canes since I was like ten. Wow, really butchered that. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I would hook the candy canes and then put them in the tubes, because mm -hmm. um, that's pretty much all a 10-year-old can really do, yeah. probably, like, do it correctly anyway. Yeah. Um, and then in high school, I'd work part-time, like, on the holidays and stuff, and whenever they needed me, you mm -hmm. know, all I would do is wrap things mostly, though, yeah. wrap candy, so. Mm -hmm. And occasionally they would have you write stuff, right? Oh, like little cards that yeah. say, like, Merry Christmas, so-and-so from mm -hmm. Jane Doe. Because you have the neatest handwriting in the family. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. Well, Dad's can be, Dad can be neat. He just writes very well. Yeah, he writes kind of slowly. <laughs> but <laughs> and he has a tendency to write in all caps, like Dad's do. I don't know how that's, yeah. a, well, that's such a Dad thing, but Dad's yep. do that for some reason. Sure do. Um, yeah, so, and then for uh, a while before you started working here, you were a sign artist at Trader Joe's. Yep, mm -hmm. and then I quit there and came here because mom could do full time, so I'd rather work for my family than for corporate, so yeah. I'd rather be here and have mm -hmm. more fun. Not that Trader Joe's wasn't fun, but yeah. working for your family is better than working for yeah. corporate, like I said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, so I know people ask us a lot why you and I didn't start... You know, from our younger age, learning a whole lot about candy making, so you can go into exactly why that is. Well, at the time when we were growing up, it was just kind of a thankless job for mom and dad. They'd just work 80 to 100 hours and didn't always... They didn't wasn't like, as prosperous. Yeah. So they were like, well, we don't want our kids to suffer the way we're... <laughs> the way we... That's, that's kind of how they said it, yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, that's the way they said it. So that they didn't bother teaching us everything because they thought, well, it'll end with us. Mm-hmm. That all changed when you started the YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. changed everything, and YouTube has changed everything, made it more prosperous, and we can keep going. I mean, obviously, that's how we got this big building. Yeah, and how we have more employees now, too. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. I, I wouldn't be full-time if it wasn't for YouTube, so. Mm. Thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess we could ask Sam next. Uh, how did you get hired here, and how long have <laughs> you been working here, and are you related? <laughs> Not by blood. <laughs> I'm not related, but yeah. I feel like your family. Yeah. I do. Mm -hmm. uh, I got hired, it'll be two years, and I think like two weeks. I think oh, wow. It was, I think it was like May 17th. Mm -hmm. And I only remember that because I kept saying, oh, my birthday's in a week, and I really like carrot cake, because <laughs> they were hinting, like, you know, what do you, what do you want? What do you want? And mm -hmm. I'm like, so that's how I remember it was yeah. May. So it'll be two years, and I got the job. I was uh, looking just for something new to do, mm -hmm. different. I had been working at Subways, just trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I saw it on Craigslist, and I came and applied. And Didn't you say that you, you uh, almost didn't apply or something? Because I almost didn't house. apply because, <laughs> yes, you're right, I, I did drive by just to see where the area was because I, I live about 25, 30 minutes from here. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of the farthest yeah. person, but it's okay. I don't mind. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I pull up and I'm like, this is weird. And I'm looking around like this, like I'm in a neighborhood yeah. <laughs> in this little house. And it, it was deceiving. Yeah. Like, I'm like, really? They put a chocolate store in there. So I, I said, forget this. And I went home. <laughs> yeah. well, I, I, literally, home? I literally drove I home. I, didn't, I did not go in. I'm like, I don't know about this. <laughs> and then I called my mom and she said, oh, they've been around for a hundred years at least. And I'm like, okay. So the next day I said, forget it. I'm going to drive back out there. <laughs> I'm going to go in. And Terry interviewed me on the spot and mm -hmm. we did our thing. And a week later, mm -hmm. in two years, yeah. <laughs> here I am still. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. So how, how's your job changed since you first started versus now? Well, the house was very stressful yeah. with shipping because, yeah. as you know, it was just that little table we had. Yeah. And um, so that was hard. And just trying to find everything was just in these little cupboards yeah. throughout the whole place. And mm -hmm. now we have a 
space. <laughs> We're running out of space, believe it or not, but we have tons of space and it's just everybody works together. You know, there you kind of had to just work in your little spot. You mm -hmm. couldn't like kind of help each other really because there wasn't a spot to help someone. Yeah, you, know, you only had so much space. So here it's like, if Carrie doesn't finish, I can go over and finish her stat while she goes and does something else. Or mm -hmm. we just, we just, it's just versatile to yeah. like here versus the house. Yeah. Yeah. So. And uh, when you first started, we, we were still uh, doing YouTube videos like when you, yes. when you started. So, yes. Um, so you were used to, I, I think, doing shipping like right from the beginning, like a decent Yeah. I, I had done some shipping in a different job. And that mm. was one reason your mom hired me because I had some shipping experience. And yeah, but we were only shipping like 14 packages a day. Yeah. And as you all know, thanks <laughs> to you guys, we are shipping way more than that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so it's just so much. I mean, this is my spot. It doesn't yeah. look like a lot, but I make it work easily yeah. for me. Mm -hmm. And Kara lets me work here because <laughs> I have a bad back. So this is higher and easier. So she takes the bullet and takes the shorter <laughs> table for me. And she's also half my age. Yeah. So <laughs> she can do it. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So yeah. uh, how would you say, how oh, both of you guys, how would you say that things have changed uh, in like the last month or month and a half or so that we've been semi-closed well closed yeah we've been closed it's been hard and especially when we had a holiday you mm -hmm. know having to write everything down and take people's information like that but right now we're just kind of steady just doing a lot of online orders uh the phone hasn't been ringing a lot lately which is kind of strange so when it does we're like ooh, 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 <laughs> you know <laughs> we'll get it yeah yeah i'm like oh what's this yeah so but um we're just plugging along, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of strange, just uh, come to work, go home, mm -hmm. not do really anything else. Yeah. So we just try to do fun things like Karen and I are listening to podcasts oh, where yeah. normally we don't do stuff like do that. Want, like when the, you know, the store is open because we can't do that. We just have on generic music and stuff. So yeah. Yeah. And you guys have been watching Parks and Rec. Yeah. And we've been trying to watch TV because the guys can watch TV and back. We're like, oh, we're going to put our little phone up here yeah. and pretend we're the guys in back and yeah. just trying to make it fun and not yeah. think about really what's going on yeah, outside yeah. you know yeah. trying to make it fun and yeah. happy to come to work that's what i kind of want to do with these videos too is like i want to just give people like an escape um and just yeah it's forget about stuff for like an hour well karen <laughs> and i were talking about it it's well all of us it's hard for us to really know how you guys are all doing because a lot of you are just at home mm -hmm. supporting us and you can't leave your houses and stuff and you're not doing anything you're really yeah we're at work yeah it's weird you know because we keep we keep the you all out mm -hmm. and we're in here but at least the six of us, seven of us with you, Craig, <laughs> um, can keep each other going. Mm -hmm. Like we can talk about stuff that, you know, we can't vent to other people because we can't go see them. Yeah, you can call them, but it's, it's not yeah. the same. Yeah. It's nice to be face to face with our coworkers, our friends. And mm -hmm. yeah. so and we like the just... little notes that you guys write on the orders. Yes. We like oh, reading yeah. <laughs> those. We always like to write uh, like a little note back to you mm -hmm. um, whenever you say, I don't know, other than just, I like candy or something. <laughs> you know, if it's like you say something personal, we like yeah. to write back and we're like, oh, that's so nice that you like to enjoy our videos and stuff. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people will write things like, I watch this with my kids every night or mm -hmm. I got my coworkers to all watch yeah. this. It's like, that's so touching. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, that's so great. Thanks for spreading it. And yeah. I mean, I think more people are, are on, on YouTube right now anyway. So. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, no, actually, most of these notes are written by me and Sam. Yeah. I know, yeah. I know, I've seen comments where people think that mom's writing all the notes. I'm like, yeah, she has really messy handwriting. So if you see really <laughs> like chicken scratch, that's from mom. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. but, yeah. Right. Well, I guess I should go see how Max got hired. Yeah, you should. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Max, you're the last one. Yeah. First of all, are you related to us? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh, man, uh, I screwed it up. Because <laughs> yeah, I know people are always just like, wait, why is he calling his dad Steve? Why is he calling him by his name? That's weird. Because he's not my dad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you and Kara were actually good friends before me and you. We sure were. Yeah. Back in pre-K. Yeah. I, <laughs> you know, I hope she doesn't get mad at me, but I don't remember it that much. <laughs> but, yeah, me, her, and Matt Molina apparently the crew back then and mm -hmm. i don't know i mean i think alicia must have been part of that too probably i mean yeah. honestly, i remember being good friends with alicia back yeah then. I, I remember that too i don't really remember too many other people from pre-k though i mean it was no, when i was like had the eye patch. oh yeah i remember his eye patch. oh yeah <laughs> a cool rocket ship backpack oh yeah all right bring back a lot of memories actually i feel like i don't remember anything and then once you say it i'm like oh yeah 
See, now you you were in the other half of the room, right? Yeah, I was like, I was Sunshine Room, I think, or maybe Rainbow Room. So were you across, I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure we were in the Rainbow Room. Okay. And Sunshine was across the hall, but our room was like two rooms, and there was a door in the middle, and mm -hmm. sometimes we would go back and forth. Hmm. Were you in that one? Maybe. Yeah. Do, do you remember the sand, the big blue sandbox thing that we had inside? Yeah. No. That was I like a feature of the room, man. man. <laughs> Indoor yeah. sandbox. I remember I had, was it Mrs. Walker's or something like that? Oh, dude, I do not remember. We had three teachers, but yeah. I do not remember any of their names. <laughs> um, I remember Miss McGrath, I think. Something that like was pre K. Her name sounds maybe, familiar. Maybe it was, I don't know. It was, when, it was a time when I was young and I was being taught. Uh, anyway, so beyond pre K. <laughs> what were uh, we talking about? <laughs> and then I think in like elementary school, like we knew who each other were, but we weren't like good friends or anything yep. until uh, sixth grade. You started playing lacrosse. See, that's, I was going to ask when, when you first came in with the camera, man, like I can never remember exactly when we started hanging out. So I, I remember I, I started playing lacrosse in fifth grade. You started in sixth grade. So then we started. Why um, did I start though? I feel like you were the one that got me into lacrosse. I don't think so. I'm, I'm pretty sure that, I'm pretty sure that you just started playing lacrosse Maybe and then. Josh. Yeah, it might have been one of your friends or something. Lacrosse was not, it wasn't a sport in our house. It's yeah. not, like one of my friends definitely taught me about it. One so. of uh, one of my cousins was pretty into lacrosse. And I think, I remember, so I remember growing up, I was, we didn't really have that much money. And I, I asked my parents if I could play football. And they thought about it. And I think they crunched the numbers. And they're like, we can't afford for you to play football. So I remember I was, second grade me was crushed. So, uh, and then... Uh, I think in order to sign up for lacrosse, it was like 35 bucks or something. And my parents were like, uh, yeah, we could do that. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I love lacrosse. <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay. Oh, um, man, and like, until they got to the lacrosse store. Yeah. Oh, well, I remember I got my first lacrosse stick for $10. I, it was like a, it was a not a good stick. Oh, was it the, <laughs> the shotgun? 15? Oh, not even. Oh, it, was like, okay. it was a brine shaft that was probably from like the 80s or something. Was that the graphite one? That, no, that was, cause that was I my loved other 10. That, that, stick, was, right? that was a good shaft, but that was my other $10 lacrosse stick. That thing was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Not the wooden one? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got that one for actually $2 a garage sale. <laughs> I've, I've gotten some very thrifty lacrosse sticks. Bargain lacrosse are over here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, so we started uh, playing lacrosse. And I think yeah. I remember your mom was the one who was like, hey, you guys only live like half yep. a mile from each other. Why don't you guys? And there's a, a park right in between us. She was like, why don't you guys meet up at the park and practice lacrosse? And we're like, okay. So like, when we didn't funny? have practice. Yeah. My mom did that same thing with me and Pat. That, me and Pat became friends in like kindergarten too. And, yeah. and she was like, you know that, like we're standing in our driveway. And she's like, you know, that's his house, right? Mm -hmm. It's like... <laughs> When you're a kid, you don't realize, oh, we all live super close to yeah, each other. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. well, yeah. Yeah. It's just funny. I just remember that when we first started playing lacrosse, uh, or we first started hanging out, we would meet up to play I lacrosse. Know, yeah. And then after a while, it was like, hey, let's meet up to play lacrosse for a little bit, and then we'll go play video games. Yeah. And then it was just, hey, let's go play video games. <laughs> let's walk down to the park yeah. with our sticks, and then immediately go to your house. Yeah. So... Yeah, so then we were pretty good friends, and then in high school, you, you ran cross country one season, and then yeah. after that, uh, I th we didn't really have any classes together, so kind of We had like, earth science together. Yeah. I can't okay. believe you don't remember. <laughs> I remember, just remember Jesse Canestra, it was oh like, laugh. <laughs> That's do you remember, do you remember Lauren's sneezing fit? No. I bring that up, like, I, I just, I've never seen somebody sneeze, she literally sneezed like 40 times in a row. Mm-hmm. You don't remember that? No. <laughs> oh, 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 that Lauren. Yeah. I'm not, she not was only there for like a week. Now know? that you say that, I'm like, no, I remember. Now that you, yeah. She sneezed now so many times, Wheeler her. was like, get in the hall. Get in the hall. <laughs> and she was really sneezing. <laughs> like, That's so funny. Yeah. Like everybody was in that earth science class. Yeah, that was a good class though. Yeah. So anyway, oh. so we did it. I, I feel like. Did you have chemistry with me and Steph? See, that's I'm pretty sure that we were all in that class together. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Okay, so occasionally we would have a random class together, but Yeah, and that then, was freshman year and senior year. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we just had like kinda you know, just different friend groups and then uh, And you started getting grounded all the time in middle school. Oh yeah. That's yeah, what yeah. stopped us <laughs> hanging out. That was in middle school. Yeah. yeah. By the time I was in uh, high school, I was a pretty good kid. Yeah. But yep. sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. That's what I nice. We kind of switched girls <laughs> there a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how did we uh, start hanging out again? Well, I don't think we... I think we started hanging out again, actually, because you started working for my parents. Because, uh, was it your dad came in or something? See, that's what I don't... 
Because I, I thought it was your mom, and then I, I always hear it's yeah. your dad. Yeah. Every time I attribute it to one of them, I hear it was the other one. So yeah. I'm not gonna. So one of your parents came in. Steal their thunder. Thunder. Yeah. What if they both came in? Nah, <laughs> they don't hang out. <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh, so one of them came in and was talking to your mom, and I had just quit Panera and was. Um, I was thinking about either moving to Pennsylvania. I actually didn't know that. Yeah, we have friends who knew a master baker down there, and they were like, there's this art commune nearby, and you can <laughs> live on the art commune for free and learn to be a baker. And I was <laughs> like, that sounds cool. Yeah. Um, or, or go hang out in Thailand for a couple of weeks. <laughs> we got family. Well, how would you there. do that? We have like a... like That was way up in the air, yeah. but I would have had to contact... Um, my not Uncle Barry <laughs> and uh, see if I could crash with him for a little bit mm-hmm. but uh, instead this job fell in my lap <laughs> and I was like okay shoot you know um, it started out as I was just going to come over and help you guys out clean it up for Easter mm-hmm. and, and you then, didn't want to get paid at all in the beginning <laughs> well because it was you know it, I wasn't really working I was like over there for like a couple hours a day just washing molds so that like your dad could keep working so mm-hmm. I was like no I'm not gonna take money for that like mm-hmm. and then they were like oh well, it's definitely no, we want you to stay yeah so. <laughs> so were you planning on just sort of I don't know volunteering a little bit a couple hours during the busy season or something I didn't even know that there was a position available mm-hmm. I don't know if there really was back then because mm-hmm. that was really before the YouTube thing yeah and uh, and I don't know your parents just said that for some reason, they liked me. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll pay you to stay. Yeah. So. <laughs> that sounds like a good job. <laughs> yeah, it was... I, I like to say that, like, I have no luck or whatever, but, like, really, this was awesome, man. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what I was going to do with my life and stuff before I came here. Mm-hmm. It, it was perfect timing. Yeah. So. And, like I said, we started hanging out more uh, yeah. because I would come downstairs and just kind of talk with you guys and then i was like oh i kind of like just hanging out just talking catching up with max yeah it's been a long time yeah (laughs) yeah uh yeah and you know maybe maybe i'm bringing this up because i know i need to do it again but uh you know we were running together and stuff and i was working out more Mm -hmm. and like it i don't know it was good for me yeah we used to go uh go for a run sometimes it was at green lakes or just around here dude everywhere man i was just thinking about when we went to it's like Morgan's. Oh yeah, we tried to find Morgan Morgan Hill State Forest. Is it Mor- I was like, like Morgan's Retreat. Yeah. Like, what is it? <laughs> yeah, I don't. I still don't even know if we found the right entrance because it was just like some I, random trails. Yeah, I I don't know because like if we kept going down that one road, like you've been to the hang glider spot. Yeah. Um. So if you go all the way up to the hang glider spot, like have you ever seen that? There's like the the path into the woods on the other side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you go through there, you go down into this valley past the creek you know back up in a hill past some like evergreens Mm -hmm. and then you come back down to that lake do you Mm -hmm. remember when we kept driving and there was like that little lake down there yeah so so i don't know if that was morgan hill (laughs) i don't even know know. because it's like the same the same woods yeah yeah it's it's some park over there we found some trails anyway yeah i've I've been hearing about morgan hill since like high school though man yeah yeah there's like rope you know rope rope uh, courses or something yeah yeah yeah, something like that you know yeah um, oh, so anyway, uh, so yeah, how yeah. how is uh, how is it working here? Uh, like enough. before, well, I, I'm still not sure if you started working here before or after we started the YouTube channel. Was it was it before? It, it was shortly after. I think in that okay. December you had started the first one, and then I started in like the end of February, beginning of March. So it was 2017. <clears throat> yeah, because I think I started. Um, Christmas Day of 2016 because I just wanted to like give like a Christmas present to like all my viewers. That's, <laughs> That's why I did that. Um, yeah. Yeah. 2017. I know I've been here for three years. So yeah. Man, time flies. Yeah. Right. Three years. Yeah. It doesn't really seem like it. No. I mean that's. That's like the longest I've ever stayed at a job. Yeah. Like three three and a half years. So. Yeah. Well. Uh. Yeah. So I guess. For time me, to move on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I was just thinking, because in high school, I just had one job, um, I think from sophomore, junior, senior year, I was yes, washing yeah. dishes. <laughs> Cause honestly, like I didn't work for my parents because they didn't really have enough work for me all year round. See, that's why I was, you know, I mean, when I first started, I didn't even know that that was a job, you know? Yeah. Like, because mm-hmm. I know it was, it was like your mom, your dad, and Karen. Yeah. And that was it. <laughs> so what was it like uh, when you were 
first on camera. Way different. Yeah. Because it was like, like now there's like a persona to the channel, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So like, you, I don't know. I'm, I feel like you're just more used to being on camera, whereas I know that you used oh, to be yeah. kind of more nervous. Especially yeah. like when you're like you're first learning something and then someone's got a camera in your face and then people are going to comment on it like, oh, well, you were so slow. I was like, yeah. I literally said it was his first time ever doing this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, you <laughs> got talking some slack. about the peanut butter cups? Yeah. I Anything, that, really. Yeah. They're like, oh, it was so painful to watch. Like, okay, guy, why don't I film you when you're at work, huh? Yeah. I don't know. I guess I understand where people are coming from yeah. when they say that, too. So, like, that part never really bothered me. It was just like, I'm going to ruin something. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. I just get defensive for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. <laughs> yeah. I get it because it's like... It, it's kind of a two-way street, though, where, like, if you're watching from the outside, mm-hmm. you don't, you know, I'm not trying to take a dig here, but, like, you really don't know everything about it, so, yeah. like, you know, you might misjudge something. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I don't know. I, I kind of lost track of my point there. But yeah, no, I, I know what you're saying. Because, I, get, I get both sides. Yeah, because we'll, we'll show, like... 20% of like how something's done and like you just don't know all the little tiny aspects and if you knew like one or two other aspects you'd be like oh that's why they don't do this or that's why they do do this yeah. you know but it's, it's hard to explain every single tiny little thing you don't really think about things and you know in your head you're like I don't want to explain this again because I'm gonna I'm gonna bore the viewers like yeah. what I we just showed them how to do it in the past three videos and now I'm gonna explain it again yeah. like <laughs> I don't yeah. know yeah, and like one thing I always try to keep in mind too is that like there's always going to be someone for someone this is going to be their first video to watch, you know. Yeah, but so. for a thousand other people yeah. it's not. So <laughs> yeah. I'm like, man, More I don't know which that, way even. to do it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I was I was okay, so you guys you guys can you guys can answer me this. Um, but <laughs> uh, I feel like um, Yes, I, th- I think it is good for me for us to explain a lot like for each video because there's going to be new viewers. But I yeah. think it's also kind of fun for the people who do know what's going on for us to explain it and them to predict what's going on. They're like, I know what he's going to say. I know what uh, he's going to say. Like, especially since it's been like a, a couple of weeks since we yeah. like, do you, right? You kind of rotate it. Yeah, I try to I try to like alternate chocolate. like brittle chocolate, um, hard candy stuff like that. Right. Uh, yeah, cause I've been trying to do a little bit more chocolate because I was talking to my mom about it just because uh, there's you can do stuff with the Enrober, you can do stuff with like unmolding stuff or like, you know, chocolate covering things. Like there's so many more things where like hard candy, it's just different flavors, yeah. I guess, which is cool. Yeah, it's the exact same process, but yeah. just like different colors or different flavors or whatever. Yeah, and like I, I do want to get into like doing uh, more varied stuff, which we we'll, should be able to do soon now that Easter's over. But I'm just trying to... We Give really my dear old dad a break. Easter's over? <laughs> I didn't know No that. one told you? I can go home? No one increase your uh, food and beer rations? No, no, they go down now because he's working more. Oh, less. Less. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So what was it like uh, when we when I first started recording you guys? Well, at first I was like, okay, you know, I don't know if anybody's going to really watch or anything. <laughs> but, yeah, okay. Because uh, we've been doing it for years, and people came and watched us make candy, and it didn't make any difference. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, once uh, once the videos started going up, we put the videos up. Uh, we started getting orders for candy, and uh, like five, six packages, maybe in a day or something. Mm-hmm. Maybe we would do twenty packages all week. Mm-hmm. We're like, wow, this is good. I mm-hmm. thought. <laughs> This is great. So it was a little bit at a time. Mm-hmm. Didn't know it would grow so yeah. much. I was kind of shocked too. I had no idea. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a great thing. Yeah. I'm we're very all, happy. We're all happy. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely. And like I kind of like stumbled upon it too because I, I didn't. I wasn't like, oh, you know what? I'm going to start this YouTube channel to advertise for my parents' business. Like mm-hmm. I had my own. Uh, vegan YouTube channel, and I knew I was. I was looking around. I was like, "Hey, there's no uh, ribbon candy videos on there. Yeah. Uh, and there's no recipe videos on their channel. Why don't I post a ribbon candy recipe video? Because I don't think that very many other people have giant marble slabs in their basement and giant copper kettles and parents yeah. who know how to make it. So, <laughs> and then I posted it there, and then it, was, it just sat there for a little bit, and then all of a sudden it just started blowing up, and it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. People kept asking for more and more videos, and I was like, "All right." I think people that do watch now realize we're like 
like I've always said, we're like the last of the old time candy shops that actually make everything that yeah. we sell. There's a couple things we don't, but jelly beans and, and sugar plums, sugar plums and stuff. But yeah. We make everything up that, that's out there. Mm -hmm. So. And you guys do it pretty much all by hand. I mean, you know, you'll use the Enrober, but... Yeah, it's still everything, yeah. It's just like making turtles. Mm -hmm. so, uh, even the creams that Max makes, you know, that's... you got to make the cream itself. Mm -hmm. got to drop it. We call it dropping to make it into the flavors. Yeah. So that's all by hand with a funnel. And, and they just watched Max mm -hmm. meticulously put, like, two raisins into each cup yeah, by hand. Yeah, like, it's, it's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah it's, yeah, it's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, I think people like seeing stuff like that being made by hand. And I know that people also subscribe for the banter because they're like, oh, you know, I checked out one candy video. But I really just stuck for all, around for all the dad jokes and sarcasm yeah. and people getting along. <laughs> like, that was one thing I didn't expect, too. Is like I thought that people would be interested in the candy. Yeah, I and then, know my work. And then I kept getting a bunch of comments of people saying, I don't really care what you guys make. I just want to watch you guys. Yeah, what's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Who knew that just being yourself on camera could increase yeah. your candy sales? <laughs> you think we're chasing my wife? Yeah. <laughs>